namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa ekayano ayam bhikkave maggo sattanam visuddhiya soka paridvanam samatikkamaya dukkadomanassanam arthagamaya न्यायस्स अधिगमाय निबानस्स सच्चिकिरियाय यदिदं चत्तारो सतिपट्ठाना थी Dear Dhamma friends, we are discussing various suttas in order to get some uh, guidance to our practice. So nowadays we are discussing सतिपट्ठाना सुत्ता which is one of the very popular सुत्ता among the practitioners because सतिपट्ठाना Buddha the mention as the एकायन mag that is the direct direct mag direct path uh, which is lead into the nibbana so there are various other paths available which have various other aims goals but satipatthana on the other hand has one direct aim and that is the realization of the nibbana now therefore it is very popular among the practitioners and satipatthana sutta available in majjhima nikaya as well as diga nikaya and uh, in diga nikaya the information related to the four noble truths are fairly uh, long lengthy on the other hand uh, in the majjhima nikaya satipatthana sutta that part is only concise on the other hand everything else is almost the perfect or almost the similar now with the starting the satipatthana sutta says ekayano ayam mikkhaye maggo there is a direct path सत्ता विशुद्धिया फॉर द प्यूरीफिकेशन ऑफ द बीइंग्स शोक पिद्वा समतिमा इन ऑर्डर टू ओवरकम सोरो लमेंटेशन दुख दोम अर्थगमा इन ऑर्डर टू डिअपियर वेरियस् सफरी अनसाटिस्फैक्ट्रीन डिस्पे एंग्विश एंड ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ मेन्टल कैंड ऑफ नेगटिव नेगटिव स्टेट्स दस अधिगमा in order to realize the path now this is the path where we have to realize from ourselves that we are recognizing from our own mind that this is the way to do or this is the thing to do in the future so likewise one uh, reflect on one's own mind one's own practice and as a result one says okay this is the thing to do and this is the correct path so now one is fairly confirm fairly determined in practice in that path so that kind of a affirmation that kind of a confirmation happens when one practices satipatthana so that buddha says as another benefit nibbana sa satchi kriya in order to realize nibbana now these are the very interesting benefits that buddha says available in satipatthana if one develops it and so we are trying to uh, go through the sutta stage by stage step by step and we basically covered kaya anupassana vedana anupassana and actually we need to cover today chitta anupassana now let me start a little again from kaya anupassana because buddha in anapana sati sutta during his uh, explanation related to the chitta anupassana section He says, "Na ham bikkave mutta satisse asampajanasse ana pan sati bhava nanga dam." So this is where Buddha give a sort of a warning that if one has wavering mindfulness, not strong mindfulness but fairly weak mindfulness, and again if doesn't have uh, well established clear comprehension, then he does not recommend chitta anupassana. So this actually comes in the state. This statement actually comes in the Anapana Sati Sutta. Probably we will discuss it in another time. And they are at this Chitta Anupassana section. He emphasizes this statement. So that basically shows us, in order to get on to Chitta Anupassana, we need some amount of mindfulness and clear knowing or clear comprehension. so that's why it is quite important to go in a gradual path rather than immediately trying to jump to some other stages where we are not yet capable of so that's why 
practicing uh, starting from kayanupassana is quite uh, easy in a way and uh, it is possible to do and uh, one can uh, develop gradually if one starts with kayanupassana so therefore if anyone teaching uh, satipatthana starts with kayanupassana because that is somewhere we can start with we can start our journey to our spiritual uh, quest now in kayanupassana if we again go to anapanasati where we are trying to be mindful about breathing so there buddha very uh, simply starts as sato vasasati sato pasasati if when one breathes in one is aware that one is breathing in when one breathes out one is aware that one is breathing out so it is in a way very straightforward but you as practitioners may know even though the statement even though the uh, task appears very easy when you are practically doing it it is extremely difficult so therefore it is one important thing that simplicity does not mean that it is easy to do on the other hand simplicity is the one taking us to more profound understanding so we should not complicate the system or complicate the method and if so we are actually uh, going in a wrong direction so we have to keep the method simplified as much as possible simple as much as possible but we have to develop ourselves in order to tally with that simplicity so this is something difficult for us because our minds are fairly complicated and even uh, today our minds are extremely complex in a way if we compare the minds of the buddhist period so the people are fairly simple they are simply depending on agriculture and they don't have so many gadgets they didn't have internet they didn't have so many vehicles facebook whatsapp none of them were there so they are simply having a very simple lifestyle so they uh, assume that he is the 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 father going to the paddy field and maybe doing something and coming back home and everybody is at home children wife and they are all living in harmoniously and they have something to uh, say uh, practice that is the buddha's teaching so likewise the the setup is fairly, fairly simple so they are thinking is not that complicated but nowadays we have so many things news are coming from all everywhere in the world so we are also so eagerly listening to them on top of that we are watching movies t- tv news this and that newspapers so ultimately our mind become extremely corrupted so such a mind purifying purifying such a mind is not that easy so therefore we need to understand the uh, sort of context that we are how we are we are living now it is fairly different from uh, during the buddha's time so therefore it may, it may take a little time for us in order to get on to uh, chitta anupassana so that's why understanding or practicing uh, kaya anupassana is very important for us because that actually uh opens the path in a more simple manner more doable manner in a way there are buddha ask us to look at the breath and when it is the in breath we are recognizing this is in breath when it is out breath we are recognizing this as out breath so if one continues this uh, task then we can say our mindfulness improving because assume you started your practice 2 weeks ago so at the beginning you couldn't keep your attention on even five breaths your mind constantly distracted but now maybe you can keep uh, your attention on 20 breaths continuously so that indicates fair amount of mindfulness fair amount of concentration kind of a restraint that we have developed so likewise we have to be very humble in get into the practice rather than thinking that we are in the 21st century i have this degree that degree or oh, i am this so and so i am i have this kind of a designation so all these uh, today's designations or today's uh, norms are not that relevant when we are coming to the practice we simply have to come with a beginner's mind uh, 
childlike mind so that humbly we can uh, get into the practice now if we are continuing our practice we can say we are able to keep our attention on the breath and there we can distinguish breath is in a way the physical process a physical activity the knowing mind this observing mind is the mental activity so we are doing some sort of a synchronization where there is a physical ongoing process and that physical ongoing process being observed by our mental process and uh, typically our mental process never stay with this uh, physical process it constantly think on various past incidents memories or distract towards the future thinking about various plans various wishes so therefore this synchronization synchronization very rarely happens so we are we are now trying to purposely improve this synchronization as much as possible because the physical process constantly happens in the present moment it can't happen in the past it can't happen for the future at the moment it happens for the present moment so we are taking an advantage of this incident where there are many physical processes and as much as possible we are trying to keep our attention on those physical processes so that we are able to maintain present moment awareness present moment attention we are able to establish mindfulness we are able to establish so this is the key point here so the physical process is simply a tool for us to live in the present moment to keep our mental observation our mental activity also to the present moment <clears throat> now once we are continuing in this process now we can even recognize whether the in breath is warmer whether the in breath is cooler whether the out breath is warmer whether the out breath is cooler whether it is long whether it is short what are the differences between in breath and the out breath and from which nostril the in breath comes in from which nostril the out breath goes out so likewise some very subtle details are necessary to extract we should be able to understand some information some subtle information related to this uh, breathing process so that actually helps us to develop clear knowing clear comprehension in a way the sampajanya so if one has sampajanya well develop sampajanya all these subtle details become evident and uh, as we continue even we are able to recognize that various stages of the in breath in breath begins with the very subtle level and then that sensitivity increases it reaches its uh, threshold and afterwards it's calming down and it ultimately disappear and after a little gap the out breath begins it also gradually increases i mean the sensitivity increases and then it reaches its threshold and that also then later disappear and after that a little gap also can be observed then the next in breath happens so likewise there's a cyclic nature to this breathing and even that would be able to recognize so this recognition shows that our mind now is fairly restrained we are able to maintain attention for a long time on a very subtle incident and uh, mindfulness has fairly improved sharpened and clear comprehension also has fairly improved because that's why we are able to understand all these very subtle details subtle stages of breathing otherwise it's very difficult to recognize all this information with a distracted mind scattered mind but since we are uh, able to focus really well to do thin slicing of time stay attentive on to this very calm process so that means we have developed fair amount of capacity in our spiritual side now if we have these facilities or these skills then probably we can go to chitta anupassana because we have some established mindfulness at the same time we have clear comprehension actually going to chitta anupassana naturally happens we don't need to force ourselves to do chitta anupassana 
rather as we are continuing our practice in kaya nupassana so it slowly brings us to vedana nupassana that is the mindfulness on feelings so it's a kind of a natural evolvement so it happens naturally so cause and effect relationship and on the other hand buddha says his dhamma has the open eye quality the practitioner being uplifted to the next stage by the practice itself you don't need to even wish that i need to come to this this these advanced stages rather if you are honestly practicing continuously practicing the practice itself is capable of uplifting you to the next stage so therefore if one starts with kaya nupassana so slowly he will be uplifted to vedana nupassana now he can dealing with he can deal with uh, various feelings different types of feelings he can recognize happy feelings pleasurable feelings neutral feelings painful feelings sort of uh, mental happiness all these subtle aspects of the feelings he can recognize now he can even look at them objectively now when it goes to chit uh, kaya nupassana the f- physical process being observed by a mental process so we have kind of a disengage observation now the yogi is able to understand this process where there is an ongoing physical process and there is an ongoing mental process the mental process can be aware of that physical process so we do some sign kind of a distinguishment where there are physical processes and again the mental processes sometimes later this is called as nama roopa paricheda jnana the discernment or discrimination between the physical physicality and the mentality physicality is the roopa mentality is the nama now this actually changes one's understanding thinking that that there is an individual i am the person i am breathing so this kind of a wrong perspective will be eliminated rather there is a body breathing or physical uh, process is happening and there is an ongoing observing process so likewise the perspective of the yogi is now changed now when it comes to vedana nupassana there are various feelings and those feelings can be aware of using the mental process so the observing mind is again one thing and the various feelings are the other thing now the yogi understands this difference now when it comes to chitta anupassana this is very uh, necessary to understand because now the pro- activity is bit challenging because one has to observe a mental process using another mental process because of the rapidity of the mind so we can do it there are various mental processes happening but using another mental process one can observe it so that's the beauty here and again that is the challenge here so if one develops kaya nupassana vedana nupassana successfully so this is not a big deal because one knows how to observe how one can do the disengage observation so this is possible if one is doing kaya nupassana and again vedana nupassana when it is coming to the mind so this sort of a observation is not that difficult but on the other hand if you have weak mindfulness you don't know how to recognize various thought patterns various emotions then if you step into this chitta anupassana prematurely most probably you you will be carried away with these processes with these various defilements we can say and uh, you will be again become sort of driven by various emotions so that's why the warning comes from the buddha first of all develops fair amount of skill in mindfulness clear comprehension then automatically chitta anupassana will be possible now when it comes to chitta anupassana so there are also buddha Uh, gives a fair amount of interesting information where he says ida bikkave bikku saragang va chittam saragang chittanti pajanat now the practitioner in this sasana so when there is a lustful thought he recognize there is lust 
vitragam va chittam vitragam chittam te pajana when there is no lust sort of a renunciative thought so there also he recognize there is a renunciative thought sado sang va chittam sado san chittam te pajana ti so when there is some aversive thought so he recognize there is aversion there is an anger vita dosham va chittam vita dosham chittam te pajana ti when there is sort of a loving kindness thought so there also he recognize there is loving kindness thought samoham va chittam samoham chittam te pajana when the mind is entangled when mind is deluded when mind is colored that also he recognize at the moment mind is colored it's not that pure it has become entangled it has become little confused so he recognize vita moham va chittam vita moham chittam te pajana when there is no such delusion mind is clear transparent vivid clarity of the mind is there so there he recognize now there is no ignorance now if we compare these three stages we can say the positive and the negative the wholesome and the unwholesome sides are there but the important thing here is that we are one is not afraid of unwholesome things unwholesome states and again one is not trying to promote wholesome states now this appear like little contradicting to the typical norm where the typical advice is whenever some sort of unwholesome thought come into the mind try to immediately get rid of it if there is any kind of a wholesome thought come into the mind try to develop it as much as possible so this could be the typical advice coming from another but here when it comes to jitan pasana we are stepping into a different level where we are trying to recognize the condition nature of all these all the wholesome states are conditioned all the unwholesome states are also conditioned so now we are trying to step into this kind of a reality which is beyond wholesomeness and unwholesomeness we can say so that is why even when a lustful thought happens it is not my lust i am not the lust rather it is lust when loving kindness happens i am not loving kindness this is not my loving kindness this is simply loving kindness when anger happens this is not my anger this is not that i am angry rather this is anger when there is sort of renunciate or thought happens it is not that i want to renunciate it's not that i have a renunciate or thought but rather there is a renunciate or thought when there is a confusion in the mind it is not that i am confused rather there is confusion when there is clarity of mind available it is not that my mind is clear my, my i am clear rather there is clarity of mind so we are looking at everything in a objective perspective objective manner without making any kind of a relationship as much as possible there are these various states and you are able to look at it objectively you can do a sort of disengage observation so this disengagement unattached observation is something that we are starting from the beginning of our practice that's why i started with uh, telling you about anapanasati so there is a physical process and the observing mental process so there's a kind of a disengagement here also there are various mental states emotions and rather than being a victim of these emotions rather than being driven by emotions now we are trying to do a disengage observation into these emotions now this is something one has to practically do i can tell you but you yourself when there are various emotions you have to recognize them actually the emotion term emotion actually is a sort of an umbrella term which uh, commonly used for many different aspects and uh, to this level of chitta anupasana we can fairly apply that term emotions because the lustful thought lustful mind uh, loving kindness mind aversive mind agitated mind distracted mind all these things we can say a uh, some amount of emotional impact is there so we can understand okay there is a certain emotions going on in the mind and you can clearly recognize now 
uh, as you continue like this so there you are not promoting these emotions you are no more driven by emotions you are no more a victim of emotions but you are able to step back and watch them as a result these emotions start to fade away fairly quickly previously assume that when there is an emotion happens in the mind so we we being caught with it we are driven by with it and we are crying we may be really laughing we become really tensed we become stressed because we are an victim of the emotion but now we know the art how to step back how to come out of it and watch it without promoting it without feeding it as a result emotion starts to fade away fairly quickly now as it happens now we know the technique now we are not promoting various thoughts going on various thought patterns going on or various thinking patterns going on rather we are now in a position to watch them step out get back and watch now as we continue then the rapidity of the thoughts become less or the frequency of the thoughts become less assume that uh, at the beginning there were 100 thoughts per minute but with your practice now it becomes say 75 thoughts per minute after some more time it becomes uh, say 60 thoughts per minute then 50 thoughts per minute 30 thoughts per minute 10 thoughts per minute so assume that uh, there are only 10 thoughts per minute so if so that indicates that you are able to carefully watch it previously there were so many thoughts very rapidly come after the other so it is very difficult to recognize gaps or the life span of the life span of a thought but now with the spaciousness of the mind the clarity of the mind now you are able to understand the life span of any thought now the practice become in a way fairly easy because it is not sort of rapid succession of thoughts happen but rather it comes one after the other very clear so you can recognize there is a beginning of thought there is a middle of the thought and there is an end of a thought then there may be a little gap then another thought comes so likewise now you get a clear picture about how the mind works so basically mind has its clarity mind has its silence within this silence there is a thought coming up there is a thought popping up but unfortunately when we are not mindful when we have less clear comprehension we are not able to recognize this as it comes in so we started to unknowingly feed it then it grows grows and ultimately it become an emotion but at the chitta anupasana level it is since the yogi is still in the early stages he is not able to understand the very beginning of the thought rather once it has grown to some level he is now capable of understanding so that's why the the term emotion may be valid here emotion indicates that it has developed to some extent now you feel it and there you can recognize now you can stop feeding it now you can stop further becoming a victim to it rather now you are able to step out of it and watch it now now this actually is kind of i can give you a simple uh, simile here kind of an analogy here assume that you are Uh, a actor of a particular drama and now you are in the stage and so many other actors and actresses are also there and you are now playing the role now you are singing you are dancing maybe crying and there are a lot of audience in the spectators in the audience they are clapping they are laughing they are also becoming emotional and lot of uh, things are going on and you are you are a simply an actor in the drama so this is what we typically do now assume that at a given time now you are sort of fed up with the playing the role you thought of going to the going out of the stage and to sit in the audience assume you, you do like that now you stop playing now you stop playing the role you are no more an actor rather you go to the audience 
and you watch the drama. And this is another stage. Now there's a drama going on, you can see it, and now you are watching it as a spectator. Now assume that everyone else going out. What I mean is the audience, all the other people in the audience, now suppose they all go out, now you are the only one looking at it, looking at the drama. Still the drama is going on. But now, rather than you encourage in the drama, rather than you start to enjoy the drama, rather than you start to sort of clapping and whistling and all this uh, encouragement doing, so you simply stop all this and you simply watch the drama. There are no any kind of encouragement. There are no any kind of indications that you are really enjoying the drama. You are no more in the story of the drama, but you know it is a drama. You know that these roles are not real. They are simply actors. They are not the real incident. They are simply depicting an old incident. They are maybe depicting kind of a future incident. It's a kind of a freak, kind of a fiction. It is not a reality. So you have this understanding. As a result, you can't really laugh. You can't really cry. You can't really clap. Because you know it is not the reality. It is a fiction. Assume you are with that kind of an understanding. So if so, now the, the people, the actors and actresses who are playing the drama are not getting any encouragement and they feel sort of exhausted. They feel unhappy because you are the only spectator and uh, you are also not giving any kind of uh, uh, encouragement and they slowly stop the drama. And once it is stopped, you can simply see the empty stage. There is no drama going on. So this is exactly what happens in our mind. So typically we are in the drama. Typically we are an actor. We are an actress. We cry, we weep, we laugh, we jump, we dance. So many things are going on. We are simply being a victim of it. We are simply being driven by the mental processes, thoughts, emotions. But you are able to now come out of the emotion, but still the emotion may be going on. Still you are unable to sort of uh, completely stop it. But now at least you are no more a, driven, uh, a victim of the drama, a victim of the thought process. But rather you now understood there is a possibility of coming out of it, step back and watch it. And after a while, you are developing this skill and you are developing mindfulness, you are developing clear comprehension, you, you are developing wisdom so that you understand these are simply thoughts. It is not necessary to make them mine. I don't need to possess these thoughts. I don't need to claim that the, these thoughts are mine. I don't, not, I don't need to be responsible for these thoughts. Rather, they are merely thoughts. And they also have the nature to come and go. They have the very short lifespan and they have the nature to arise and pass away. Likewise, now the, the mechanism happens in the mind is fairly uh, uh, clear to you. And as a result, the thoughts, the appearance of the thoughts become less and less. That's why I said now it may be 10 thoughts per minute. I'm just giving an example here. Since there are only 10 thoughts per minute, now you can recognize various gaps between thoughts. As a result, you are further having some space in your mind. Clarity improves. Because one after the other thoughts are coming and you can recognize very clearly they have the nature to come and go. They have the nature to arise and pass away. Now actually we are in the, uh, we can say the Satipatthana Bhavana stage. We are one is recognizing the nature of arising and passing away. That Buddha says, Samude dhammanu pasiva chittasming viherati, vai dhammanu pasiva chittasming viherati. Samude vai dhammanu pasiva chittasming viherati. Now you are able to recognize how these thoughts are arising. Again you are able to recognize how these thoughts are passing away. Now in a way, now Buddha takes us to this level and we can say the handling the emotions. 
now there is another subtle level buddha encourages us that is where sankittang va chittang sankittang chittanti pajanati vikittang va chittang vikittang chittanti pajanati now when mind is fairly contracted mind is focused to something mind has sort of hinged to something locked with something that also you can recognize and again when mind is distracted jumping to this and that that also you can recognize now you are not that afraid of that now typically suppose at the beginning of your practice say when you are doing walking meditation if your mind get distracted you are a little upset you are a little uh, sort of unhappy about it but at this level the distraction is kind of a knowledge there is kind of a distraction happen there is sort of a scattered mind available and you are looking at it also objective you are not promoting distraction you are not no more a victim of the distraction but you are able to come out of it and understand okay it is not mind has distracted similarly assume that your mind is well focused on to something you are watching something you are listening to something there your mind has fairly focused fairly narrowed down contracted so that is also you can recognize now these are two states that in a way uh, showing us kind of a middle region of our mind or rather not really wholesome or unwholesome but sort of a middle but now buddha is taking us to more advanced levels of our attention there buddha says mahangatam va chittam mahangatam chittam thi pajanati amahangatam va chittam amahangatam chittam thi pajanati when there is sort of an absorbed mind assume that you are doing anapanasati there is anapanasati sign nimitta and you are able to absorb to it completely absorb to it it's very blissful very concentrated you are in a heightened concentrated state of mind and once you are coming out of it that also you can understand now the important thing here is that rather than sort of attach to this concentrated state rather than attach to this blissful state here buddha request us to look at it objectively assume that you are able to absorb to the anapanasati nimitta assume that you are in a sort of an absorption a jhana rather than continuously being there so buddha's advice here is to come out of it and watch it objectively now there are no, there won't be any sort of an attachment here because this has become a raw material for your practice it is not that for many hours that you are in the jhana in the absorption rather you are able to come out of it emerge from it and watch it and uh, once you are out of it you know that amahagatam va chittam amahagatam chittanti pajana it is no more a great mind but rather it's a sort of a typical uh, mundane type of mind so that states you can recognize now all these even the highly concentrated states we are not trying to be a victim of it we are not trying to be uh, driven by it we are not trying to attach to it rather we are able to watch it now buddha is taking us even subtle levels buddha says sautaram va chittam sautaram chittanti pajanati anuttaram va chittam anuttaram chittanti pajanati now assume that one is in the first jhana now they are if he is not that satisfied now he wants to get on to second jhana because second jhana is more subtle more delicate more advanced so he wants to go to second jhana now he has sort of a comparing comparing mind where he is comparing the first, second jhana is much better than first jhana so this comparison this compare, comparing mind we can say as sautaram chitta more and more the new states or some advanced state subtle state refined states are there so at the moment you are not that satisfied in the present level but now looking towards looking forward towards this refined states so sautaram chittam sautaram chittanti pajanati so even you are recognizing how 
this kind of a comparing going on when this kind of an inclination towards the more refined states is happening in the mind and once you reach that refined state assume that you are happy assume that temporarily you are happy and you feel it's the very much the unsurpassable state this is the kind of a more contented state assume that now you are in second jhana at the moment you have that contentment and now you understand okay this is the anuttaram chitta now you are more than sec- first jhana now this is the best as far as possible and you say anuttaram chitta anuttaram chitta anti pajana now you have a surpa- unsurpassable state now likewise you can go on and on to various very refined uh, absorptions there are you are recognizing the inclination towards the next jhana more refined jhana and that also one can recognize and once you reach that level that also one can recognize and then buddha say samahitam va chittam samahitam chittam ti pajanati asamahitam va chittam asamahitam chittam ti pajanati when mind is concentrated that also he can know when mind is not that concentrated that he, he that also he can know then buddha takes us vimuttam va chittam vimuttam chittam ti pajanati avimuttam va chittam anuttam chittam ti pajanati when mind is liberated that also he can know when mind is not yet liberated that also he can know now suppose that you are doing metta using metta meditation you can attain various jhana various absorptions so each level you can know okay now i am in first jhana i reach there using metta and uh, it is very beautiful very pleasant very blissful so you are able to come out of it and recognize it recognize the qualities of metta how even how they come and go they are not permanent this the 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 qualities of metta happens in the first jhana is come and go it also is sort of transient that also one can recognize assume now one has an inclination towards the second jhana that also one can recognize that inclination that uh, comparison that is also possible to understand and once you are in the second now assume that you are fairly contented now you are that contentment one can understand and likewise suppose one is reaching the third level third jhana using metta and typically use metta finish at the third jhana and then assume that you are sort of uh, developing loving kindness towards all the beings towards all the directions and you reach metta cheto vimutti that is the complete freedom of mind attained through metta now that also one can recognize so there you can say now these are in a way very deep here the difference between the buddha's teaching and someone another person's another teacher's teaching here is very different very important the 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 depth of understanding is very different very interesting because if you can remember that as the bodhisattva buddha to be actually when he is in search of the dhamma in search of nibbana so he found various teachers first he come across alarakalamputta and there he was able to attain the akinchanya uh, nothingness this alarakalama putta thought that is the end so he is fairly absorbed to it and he understood that as the end that as an ibbana and that is the completion that is the perfection but buddha to be bodhisattva understood it is not the ibbana and he was able to understand it in a different way rather than being a victim to it rather than restricted to it and he is able to come out of it and look at the imperfections disadvantages drawbacks in this nothingness in this akinchanya aitana and then he went to another teacher uddakarama putta uddakarama putta has the even the higher refined state that is the neva sanya na sanya aitana that is the neither um, what you call that there is no sanya there is no sign and even it is not signless so kind of an intermediate level 
So it is even very refined. Now Uddhakarama put the thought, so this is the end, this is the Nibbana, this is the final attainment. And he is being so conditioned with it. And he has a wrong view about it. But Buddha to be, Bodhisattva was able to come out of it, look at it and understand the various drawbacks in it. That's why he has given it up. Now this is very important because when one is in Samatha concentrations, if one is attached to those concentrations, so one's mind become conditioned, one's mind become so attached to it, inclined towards that, so and one might think this is the end. And one might even get on to wrong conclusions thinking that one has attained Maggapala, path and fruition. Because these concentrated states, highly concentrated states are prone to certain wrong views. So this is very important to understand here. If not, one may get on to wrong conclusions. Now, I want to warn here using Brahma Jala Sutta, there are, there are 62 wrong views are showed, mentioned, and among those 62 wrong views, 49 happens because of the deep concentration levels. So when one attains deep concentration levels, if one is not able to come out of it, or rather not able to see drawbacks in it, not able to objectively look at it, if one has a wrong view, thinking that this is the end, or these are the various uh, benefits of this, and likewise, so one is more into the in favor of this deep concentration. There's a higher possibility of getting into wrong views. But on the other hand, in this Chittanupasana section, Buddha is very carefully taking his disciple to a more wise level more refined understanding, more knowledgeable level that all these conditioned, all these highly concentrated states are also conditioned. They also have the nature to arise and they also have the nature to pass away. They also are dependent on so many causes and conditions. They are not the ultimate. They are not the Nibbana. And very refined mental levels, mental states, concentrated states are now becomes raw material for one's practice. Now this is very important and highly, uh, what to say, highly uh, difficult to understand for a person who is so attached to concentrated states. But here Buddha very beautifully shows that he starts with uh, developing some understanding about emotions. Now mind becomes fairly refined. And now even one understands when it is focused to something and when it is distracted. And it is well focused and absorbed to something that also one can understand. And when it is getting to more and more refined states, when there is such kind of comparison going on, inclination towards higher states, that also one can understand. And when one is fairly contented in that highly concentrated state, that also one can understand. And even when one reaches uh, Cheto Vimutti, liberation of mind, that also one can understand. But all these things are not the permanent solution. All these levels are merely conditioned. So in Chittanupassana, so therefore one is looking at all these levels objectively, and there one is developing fair amount of wisdom that all these have the nature to arise, all these have the nature to pass away. Samude Dhamma Anupasiva Chittasming Viharati, Vai Dhamma Anupasiva Chittasming Viharati. Samude Vai Dhamma Anupasiva Chittasming Viharati. Now, when one does like that, then Buddha says, Atti Chittantiva Panasa Satipachu Patita Hoti. There is mind, there are concentrated states. There are various mental states. And they are not permanent. They are not mine. You can't expect lasting happiness from this. Because they have the nature to come and go. Yava deva jnana mattaya patisati mattaya. 
and now he is using all these various mental states further to develop mindfulness to broaden his wisdom to broaden his understanding about all these mental states more and more one does it so mind become more clear unattached free from any sort of conditioned things and mind become fairly unassociative not attached not attached to any sort of a bodily process not attached to any kind of a feeling and not even attached to any kind of a mental emotion or any thought or anything so mind has become completely unassociated not attached to anything in the world so buddha ends telling anisitoch viharati nachakinchi loke upadi now one tries to keep one's mind completely free not attached with anything not grasping anything in the world so this is something that maybe happens temporarily at the moment temporarily at the beginning then one has to employ some sort of a restrainment in order to develop this unattached state this complete liberated state this complete free state unassociated state in order to have that one needs fair amount of restrainment one needs seal and lot of clarity of mind is necessary samahita the the clarity of mind collectedness of the mind is required so one understand the need of a samadhi need of a clarity of the mind this is not that absorb absorbing level of samadhi but rather to see all these condition nature so that clarity of mind is required so he knows the level of that clarity if it is less then again mind get sort of corrupted with various states various defilements but if it is too much then again mind get stuck in that higher higher concentration so understanding this understanding the balance is very important now further improvement he understand is required there are still various defilements in the mind various uh, sort of hidden tendencies various traits are there so the development of the wisdom is required so the sila samadhi panya he understand is the path so likewise in this uh, chitta anupassana section we can say buddha is taking us starting with this typical wholesome and unwholesome levels then get into understanding very refined absorptions and even to go beyond that even looking at them as condition levels condition states of mind and to use all these levels as a raw material for our vipassana as a raw material for the understanding of the condition nature impermanent nature unsatisfactory nature non self nature so if one has that deeper understanding so he is he is going to sort of have a mind which is free from everything not attached to anything not grasping anything in the world so that is the again the sort of uh, ultimate result we can understand in this section anisitocha viharati nachakinchi loke upadeti so in this section also therefore we can say put the first of all establish ourselves in the various mental state satipatthana and then he is giving instructions to see the arising and passing away nature to see the reality so see the behavior of these various mental states satipatthana bhavana and when one has developed fair amount of mindfulness clear comprehension wisdom then one recognize that is a complete path has to be followed that i have to uh, sort of grow in that path i have to further develop in that path so he understand from his own practice sila samadhi panya there is morality necessary sort of discipline is required clarity of mind is required and the wisdom has to be further developed so one is getting to noble eight fold path so the uh, satipatthana bhavana gami nincha patipada he recognizes so with that i like to conclude the chitta anupassana section which is very interesting and very uh, challenging in a way and again very comprehensive now if you compare the typical uh, say uh, mindfulness talking today is more 
uh, we can say buddha's mindfulness that the depth of the mindfulness that buddha talks is very comprehensive and very deep and it is very complete so with that note i like to conclude today's sutta teaching now i open the session for questions Um, for any new friends that's joining us for the first time, you may ask your questions directly by raising your hand, or you can send them to me via the chat. Um, so, Bente, one of the questions um, is: Can you please help clarify the difference between mindfulness and clear comprehension? When you have mindfulness, do you naturally develop clear comprehension? Uh, we can't say that uh, we naturally develop clear comprehension, but rather Buddha's teaching, various kamatahan, various uh, techniques, tools that Buddha shows, is actually slowly directing us towards that development of clear comprehension. Say, for example, the establishment of mindfulness in breathing. At the beginning, we know okay, there is in breath happens, there is out breath happens. There is in breath, there is out breath. Continuously assume one after the other in breaths and out breaths are happening. Again and again, <clears throat> we are able to establish ourselves on the in breath, establish ourselves on the out breath. So that is where the establishment of mindfulness. But now Buddha does not keep us there continuously. Rather, he invites us to see various facets of this breathing process. He is asking us to sort of search to examine whether the in-breath is long, whether the in-breath is short, whether the out-breath is long, whether the out-breath is short, from which nostril is it happening, whether it is, uh, say, warm or cool. So likewise, so this is where the examination starts. So this is where the clear comprehension starts. Now you are trying to clearly comprehend the phenomena. You are not just staying on the phenomena not just being mindful, rather you are now carefully examining the process, carefully examining the object. Then only you are able to recognize various facets, various qualities of the process. Now therefore we can say the establishment of mindfulness is something, one thing, sati, and the clear comprehension is another thing. But later this starts to go hand in hand. So therefore we have the coined word sati sampajanya. Mindfulness and clear comprehension. Mindfulness actually, without mindfulness, actually clear comprehension is impossible. So therefore, as you develop mindfulness, so Buddha's teaching, Buddha's various techniques given us, helps us to develop clear comprehension in a way, in a gradual way. So later, even one is able to recognize various stages of the brain. Not that just the in-breath, but rather there's a beginning of in-breath, there's a middle of in-breath, there's an end of in-breath, there's a gap. So likewise, very uh, subtle aspects of the breath can be recognized. So that indicates that improvement of clear comprehension. Yeah. Um, and for the next question, I'd like to move on to Sanjay. Sanjay, can you please share your thoughts on this? Um, so, uh, when you, you described that uh, when you start uh, observing the thought process from another thought, thought process and uh, uh, the, the number of thoughts become less and then that allows you to look at the more details like a beginning and the end. So, when I was uh, thinking about this one, I, w I wonder whether when you have a clear mind you have more sharp mind, can that have a different uh, way of looking at the beginning, at the end? Like for example, if you uh, increase the sampling frequency, that uh, you know you do one hertz frequency, you look at something versus 10 megahertz, you can see more detail. But when you become your mind more uh, clear, then you will be able to see more. So either is it really the, the number of thoughts changes or is it the, your frequency, the capabilities become increasing? I think uh, 
now the capability the resolution in a way also develops so that's why uh, at the beginning you know i mean if we get into uh, say anapanasati as a beginning assume that at the beginning you only know at the moment it is in breath happens at the and on now out breath happens you have only that information but as you improve the resolution as you improve the frequency that is the thin slicing of time now you can see even different stages are there it is not maybe a single breath there are say five breaths are there it's not a single out breath it may be a kind of a collection of five out breaths are there so likewise so you are you are able to sort of disintegrate the process you are now removing the compactness now it, it becomes a kind of a group now as as it is a group then there are, there are some minute in breaths happen and each minute in breath you can clearly recognize so that improve that indicates the resolution of the mind that indicates the frequency of the mind as you say and uh, this indicates the clarity of the mind as well now the important thing is now logically we think this may increase continuously so more and more information will be available more and more information will be available so this is a kind of a never ending process we are constantly improving the resolution of the mind continuously more and more information will be going to be available but this happen in a different way so as you improve the resolution as you improve the thin slicing of the time of the mind the information available reaches to some threshold and ultimately they start to disappear because you are recognizing the nature of this phenomena you recognize the you recognize that this minute sensation has a nature to arise and pass away it's very rapid very quickly there are various sensations now you can't even recognize distinguish whether it is in breath or out breath there's a kind of a sensation is there and you can't even locate where it is it is somewhere but you know it very clearly and all these very rapid sensations come and go come and go come and go arise and pass away arise and pass away so as you develop this kind of a wisdom then due to this rapidity so you can't even take a sign of this process now the complete uh, process going to be changed in a different way now since it, because of its rapidity you can't get the signs you can't see the you can't see the boundaries now everything appear like a flux now it is all our energies it's no more a kind of a physical thing but everything becomes sort of an energy you can't now distinguish whether it is in breath or out breath or where it is whether it is the beginning this the end everything appear like a flux now slowly mind gives up the whole thing there you are get on to a different level so these physical processes have their nature to arise and pass away they are extremely transient but you your mind has the capacity to be free from all this so this is the kind of uh, perspective change happens in the mind so there you understand so all these processes are utterly vulnerable utterly transient so why am i holding it is there any purpose of attaching to it is there any purpose of grasping it so the mind itself starts to be away from it be free from it further it starts to detach from it try to disclaim this process so this is the change going to happen in the mind so therefore i mean it is true that what you are telling if we are if we approach it linearly if we approach it logically we can say we are constantly improving the resolution of the mind frequency of the mind so the uh, detail going to be available will come more and more but but there's this kind of a change happens in the mind thank you anthony um, i have a, uh, another question yeah um at the beginning uh, i talked about the uh, mindfulness improving mindfulness and watching the uh, breathing and then later uh, looking more detail like whether it's a long or short uh, uh, break Uh, but so uh, one of the confusion i have is like uh, for me 
long and short is always a relative term. Yeah. So to know whether something is long or short, we have to remember what was before. And so then, are we losing our mindfulness when you do that? No, actually, one, one aspect of mindfulness, one benefit of mindfulness is this memory. So, you know, Buddha, Buddha at one, uh, I mean, mindfulness is a kind of an evolving quality. So, it is not merely depending on the present moment. So, as we develop mindfulness, uh, the memory, improved memory is one, another side benefit we are getting. So, and again here, the long or short, that memory is kind of uh, only, only related to the previous breath. When compared to the previous in-breath, is the present in-breath long or short? When compared to the previous out-breath, is the present out-breath long or short? So it is not that we are trying to compare with an in-breath happened several months ago, but in the just a previous moment there is an in-breath happened. Compared to that, what is the length of the present in-breath? So likewise, this is not a difficult thing as you continue. And again, not only that, as you develop mindfulness, the memory become improved. So that is another side benefit we have and therefore we are not going out of mindfulness. The mindfulness helps us to, actually mindfulness has the capacity to do it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So for the next question, I'd like to invite Mahisha. Mahisha, can you unmute your mic? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Bhante, um, I have two questions. I'll be quick uh, with both. Um, one of them is actually... Are uh, you, you have muted your mic? Please check your mic. Um, hope it's okay now. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, so I have, I said I have two questions. So the first one is, um, I followed uh, Swami and uh, uh, yours um, Dharma talks in past like weeks, and um, kind of a progress. Uh, thank uh, many merits for that. And um, yeah, so if I um, get back where I was today and yesterday with the, my meditation. Um, now, um, I was actually um, with the uh, state of, you know, uh, falling myself, um, like to a sleep mode and then, but I recognize it's not really sleep, but um, deep samadhi, whereas then I got the come down that uh, uh, very deep samadhi is also not the perfect thing. Uh, we need to balance uh, that. So I didn't uh, got hang off, you know, how to balance it and um, go towards, you know, taking uh, some uh, mind towards uh, some Situilya uh, Rusya in sync thoughts, you know, yeah. So getting into the thoughts and then coming. Uh, I mean, I'm not purposely going, but the thoughts are coming and I watch it, but I don't take it. So uh, instead of saying the mind walking around, I look at it like the, the outside signals or things coming towards my mind. And I try to understand them, identify them and say, uh, just ignore them, just watch them and then they walk away. So that's the procedure I undertake and I don't like to say that my mind is walking. Instead I say to myself, um, the outside signals are coming towards me and it's uh, knock on the gate and then they just go because the gate is closed. <laughs> yeah. So like that I keep on watching. Um, so uh, the, yesterday's and uh, today's stuff like that, but today I actually went to the uh, uh, Samadhi, which then I afterwards I realized that I actually went too much deep Samadhi. Uh, uh, so I, meet, uh, I I kind of, you know, balancing these days that, so that's what the Kamarhan I uh, understood that the Kamarhan I got. Uh, my question is, um, now I was listening to your talk today as well about the Chitta Nupasana, 
many merits for that. I I try to practice in that way in day to day life. Like with the thoughts are coming, I can identify them, and uh, through that I may be able to let them walk away. Um, so the question is, um, it's like I'm getting like uh, we need to study a lot and lot. Uh, the learning learning process is going on and. Uh, uh, just a thought came to my mind saying, uh, do we really need to learn in detail this Dhamma uh, one by one uh, to uh, walk into the path of Nibbana? That's my first question. Yeah, um, actually when you are getting to uh, Vipassana, so understanding of the Dhamma practically is one aspect and uh, proper guidance from in from the Buddha's teaching is the other aspect. So if if both are happening, then it is very easy for us because we are quite uh, happy about the uh, happy about what we are doing, and it is not that we are simply going on our own private path, but rather this is a kind of a very ancient path that we are following. It is not that my own private initial path, but there are many arahants, many Buddhas have practiced this same path. I am also now confidently going in the correct path. So that kind of a confidence develop as we do sort of a comparison, as we do uh, kind of an understanding, if we do have that kind of an understanding about Buddha's teaching. Actually, that is the whole uh, purpose of this session also, where we are trying to uh, sort of look at various teachings from the Buddha, various suttas from the Buddha, and we are trying to get some guidance from that, some light from those Buddha's teaching so that we are become more confident we are become we understand okay we are in the correct track so it is necessary to understand the suttas and the buddha's teaching in the proper perspective if one is uh, wrongly defining if one is misinterpreting them so then the listeners may going in wrong direction so that is also another side that we need to understand so anyway uh, having some understanding about buddha's teaching is necessary so that's why buddha mentioned in Anugahita Sutta, that if one is supporting one's practice in five ways, so then, then it is better, then there's a, then there's a bit, uh, higher possibility that one reaches one's goal. First, starts with morality, Sila Anugahita, then the Sutta Anugahita, that is where you are listening to Buddha's teaching, you are keeping it in your mind, then there's the Sakacha Anugahita, you do a good discussion. And then the Samatha Anugahita, you are developing concentration when it is necessary. And the Vipassana Anugahita, you are developing wisdom. So, therefore, Buddha asks us to support our practice in these four, in these five manners, in these five aspects. So, that actually gives a complete picture. Fairly complete, way, uh, five different ways of support that may really uh, generate good, good atmosphere in our mind. And it may sort of helps us to smoothly attain our goal. Nisha, do you have a, a second part to your question? Looks like um, she is muted. Uh, looks like sorry. she. Uh, sorry, I thought that yeah, you have uh, attained. Yeah, I, I lost connection time to time, but that's okay. I will listen to the recording for yeah. the complete answer. Fine. Uh, my next question is one day. Um, sometimes when I'm practicing the meditation, like, um, you know, with the day to day course, we forget certain things. Yeah. Is that a normal thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not that. We can't, I mean, uh, keep everything in our mind. I mean, uh, it's true that I mean, even I mean, even though now I am preaching to you, I mean, certain aspects later may go out of my memory. But time to time, when we are listening, and again and again we are sort of discussing, so we are not losing the complete track. But we are because Buddha's teaching actually have one goal, that is the liberation in a way, the mutti rasa, that is the I mean the quality, the taste of the Buddha's teaching. One can say Buddha say. Is the freedom. So, and whenever, whenever we are discussing Buddha's teaching, Dhamma, 
so then then we can say we are rejuvenating we are sort of charging the battery so that we can continue the path confidently so it is it is quite difficult to i mean keep everything in the mind and it is not required but more and more we are in the path more and more we associate the kalyana mithas so the function may happen smoothly thank you very much pankaj yeah yeah Uh, thank you. And for the next question, what is the difference between feelings and emotions? Uh, yeah, actually, we can say the feelings are the earlier stages of emotions, and as we uh, more become a victim of the feelings, so they become aggravated, they become developed. and starts to get on to some overwhelming level so they are we sort of really feel them in a more gross manner so they are we call it as an emotion but as we develop mindfulness so we may recognize the emotions because they are vivid they are easy to understand but slowly as we develop mindfulness they may not develop to very high levels and slowly and again it may not last for long time now we know how to handle emotions and we become less emotional and later we can even recognize the beginning of an emotion so that means they are we are at the level of feelings where we understand okay there is a pleasurable feeling we understand there is a painful feeling we understand there is a say a kind of a, a neutral feeling so that we are that is where we are coming to the root and there are if one is able to understand like that so then one becomes less emotional because you are not promoting that feeling so that is the source of the emotion thank you for that okay uh, um the next question i like to invite radhika to please ask thank you for being here yes i can hear you My question is about uh, my sitting meditation, but it also touches my daily life. So it's like two questions. Yeah. So when I'm doing sitting meditation, generally uh, my mind gets uh, very calm, very fairly soon. Uh, the the breath is very very short, and um, I I have to be very very vigilant because if not, I tend to get drowsy. But I have looked at my mind at this stage, and it's very calm, and there is no uh, defilements or anger or uh, desire or anything. And at this stage, I sometimes look at the rest of my body, uh, and I can feel uh, the pressure on my bottom where where I'm seated. sometimes on on my ankle i do that because if not i sometimes fall asleep so if i'm getting very very calm i try to keep vigilant so that i don't now in my daily life i have found that sometimes when i'm doing something else thoughts will arise and i might feel some emotion based on the thoughts but i can identify pretty soon um as uh, that I'm more and more I'm anxious about something and so I will let it go and let it pass and continue with what I'm doing now something that I enjoy in my daily life is to watch a movie of a comedy or a, or a um documentary and I find that when I'm enjoying that I'm I'm enjoying it and I'm laughing with it and if it's a sad thing that i'm watching a documentary then i will be sad now this doesn't usually affect me in my the rest of my daily life or my meditation so is it okay for me to uh include uh documentaries and comedies in my daily life <laughs> very interesting so i think uh, because i mean <clears throat> we as human being some <clears throat> need some kind of a 
some kind of a stimulation because we can't uh, completely become sort of a numb people or dumb people but we need some some happiness some pleasure <coughs> that is also required and uh, so how we uh, implement this happiness <coughs> this is what we need to be careful now if the way we implement happiness is harmless then no problem so buddha actually recommend uh, it is naturally buddha didn't completely deny the happiness there are various feelings pleasurable feelings painful feelings and neutral feelings and buddha say if any kind of feeling promotes wholesomeness then associate it if any kind of feeling promotes any negativity in the mind any kind of a delusion in the mind then buddha says don't associate it so there are various pleasures available and uh, once we associate that sort of a pleasure if it is making us somewhat happy light minded uh, and we are free from depression and some positive qualities are improving positive atmosphere is developing in the mind so that indicates that they are we are getting certain benefits from that kind of an association so then we can continue but on the other hand assume that before we associate this uh, feelings assume that our mind was clean there is no any anger there is no any lust but because of the association of this assume that now mind become angry now mind become really agitated now mind become really confused then that kind of an association is not useful so therefore we ourselves have to de- decide so whether it is useful or not buddha never uh, deny the association of uh, any particular kind of feelings rather he give the sort of open attitude where we can associate anything but we have to be responsible in checking whether it has contributed towards the improvement of my uh, well being of the mind or is it really sort of uh, destroyed the well being of the mind or really harm the well being of the mind and as you said sometimes being with the other people cracking a joke and having a good laugh is necessary we can't simply be dumb so therefore find your balance thank you bhante to be honest i have realized that if i watch news i get very upset and so i have cut that down right especially living in this part of the world right and what going on in my neighbor's country in usa it is very difficult not to be affected right so I, that's why i am uh, we are trying more to watch comedies or documentaries because you put the tv on it's always breaking news <laughs> right so it breaks you as well yes it does it affects that's why i am <laughs> correct try to cut the part down good good so uh, thank you yeah you're welcome thank you for the next question i'd like to invite uh, chitra devi Uh, thank you uh, bhante my question is uh, from the way um, i understand and the way you ex- you explain this sutta that the uh, buddha has uh, uh, taught uh, is mainly for vipassana would that be right if i say that uh, yeah i can say so because i mean we can't say it's pure vipassana because at the beginning we basically establish mindfulness and that we can say as samatha as well is i mean kind of it's a combination we can say majority we can say as the vipassana but first stages are fairly uh, in parallel with samatha now say for example when one knows that there is in breath when one knows there is out breath so when clearly focus on the incoming uh, breaths so that that is in a way a samatha but without it you can't get on to the clear comprehension and the other levels of vipassana so it's a very beautiful uh, blend of samatha and vipassana but the majority is the vipassana we can say and um, bante um, now when we investigate i mean like you know we are looking at the characteristics of the breath and uh, the um, uh, we we'll go deeper into the the, the breath in terms of the characteristics mm-hmm. uh, then are we 
actually uh, moving away from something yeah of course because whenever we are searching the characteristics when we are investigating any kind of a phenomena we are of course going out of samatha we are stepping into vipassana actually the beginning of clear comprehension is the beginning of vipassana we can say because we are investigating so this investigative attribute it more is more towards the wisdom so that is vipassana we can say actually we don't need to have a clear margin uh, whether i am in samatha whether i am in vipassana because these are going hand in hand and they are contributing to each other helping each other so we have to we have to get the benefit from both uh, because i find that when i look at uh, the rising and the samadhi vai and uh, i'm investigating i also get more more joy so i was um, wondering whether that's a part of vipassana or whether it's a blend of something uh, vipassana no actually vipassana also has the joy so that is where now when you get into bodhanga enlightenment factors piti sambodhanga is there so all bodhangas we can say fall into the level of vipassana and sati dhamma vichaya viriya piti passaddi samadhi upekha so likewise seven enlightenment factors are listed so among piti so piti oh. is the rapture so that is not merely from samatha but it is coming from that you have a good understanding now i am in line with buddha's teaching even today that i can uh, sort of uh, realize it so likewise you get a kind of an honest uh, rapture or honest happiness niram is a piti so that is necessary in the path and buddha encouraged that so therefore we can't say that the piti is only available in samatha there are a lot of piti available in the vipassana as well now now in dhammapada also buddha mentioned that uh say when one is seeing the arising and passing away nature lot of gladness piti is arising in one's mind mm-hmm. and um the um uh, you also within went on to say about the first jhana and um you said to step out of it and watch it now we when we go some uh, teachers say we shouldn't interrupt uh, when we have the jhana we should just continue so um i i got a little bit um, confused there mm-hmm. and also you went on to say the higher states you have to step out uh, this all this, uh, this the world of space and nothingness and neither perception or non perception we have to step out of those states and watch it i um, got a bit confused so i thought uh, i'll ask you to clarify that pante yeah actually that is the buddha's teaching we are i mean with the very categorically mentions if you say if you read uh, uh, salleka sutta and buddha get on to explain all these eight jhanas rupa jhana and arupa jhana and there he mentioned so being in the jhana if one say that i am contributing towards the eradication of defilements then he is wrong rather being in the jhana one may enjoys kind of a present abiding that's all that's all but if you want to develop vipassana if you want to develop sort of understanding if you want to develop wisdom you need to emerge from jhana you have to use the even that to see how impermanent it is how conditioned it is how vulnerable it is and uh, that is the way of developing vipassana so that is why even if you if one is in the jhana for many days it does not contributes much towards the uh, wisdom wisdom, wisdom. Uh-huh. yeah that's why uh-huh. that's why buddha encourages even in this uh, and giving us a very good uh, sort of uh, recipe here and uh, and buddha and it shows how refined that buddha has gone how deep how deep that buddha has gone even to understand the rising and passing away nature of this now this mahagatan chittang amahagatan chittang samahitan chittang asamahitan chittang clearly indicates the higher concentrations so now the advice is buddha says samudaya dhamma anupassiva chittasmin herati vai dhamma anupassiva chittasmin herati so that means all these very higher concentrated states have the nature to come and go have the nature to arise have the nature to pass away they are not permanent they are so conditioned 
so if one is understanding this so one's understanding this condition nature is a must yes yeah because i came to go i mean i i have i am developing personal because i know that i have to develop these terms but i think to go along with some test that's why i asked the question so yeah uh, yes one day so that's fine thank you very much yeah yeah Thank you. And for the last question, I like to invite Sonali to please ask. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Bhante. Um, I have a question about sila, mm -hmm. and um, I know that we have to observe the sila, sila, and that will help us with the uh, meditation. And I just, I just, I mean, I observed five precepts. I think I. I do it to some extent, I guess I do it, I don't know, I, I'm confused about that, I don't know what that means. You, I mean, what that means in the sense you don't know the meanings of the five precepts? No, no, I know the meaning of it. I don't know um, how to gain confidence that you're okay. observing the sealer as much as you should or how to reach a threshold that would affect your meditation. Right. Right. How, how do you gain confidence in the fact that you are maintaining yeah so the basically proper amount of sila I, I don't yeah basically if you if when when you when you look back your mind when you look at yourself if there are no regrets telling that i did this wrong i did that wrong because of my wrong activity that the other person got really upset he was really hurt and i also got really hurt so likewise if we have that kind of a complaining mind, if we have such, such an accusing mind, so that means something wrong in our sila. But on the other hand, if our mind is telling now you are a good person, you deserve more happiness, you deserve more growth in the spiritual side, when compared to my previous uh, stages in my life, you are now a good person. So likewise, if there is that sort of a positive atmosphere in the mind, so that means that you are maintaining good sila. Okay, then my <laughs> <laughs> I know that I'm uh, my sila is better than it, it used to be. Right. And but I do have that regretting mind all the time. Mm -hmm. About what? And I was wondering if the regretting mind is because I'm much more sensitive and more aware of my thoughts. Right. Um, than I was ever before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so that's what it is. I, I'm constantly regretting about things that I that just came to my mind that I didn't even do. Right. That the, the fact that I just thought that is kind of disturbing. Right. So that is where the mindfulness practice actually helps. That I mean, you don't need to own, you don't need to claim these thoughts as yours. Various thoughts may come, various regrets, regretting thoughts may come, and how to look at them objectively, rather than being a victim of it, rather than driven by it. How are you able to step back and watch them? So that is the practice. So start from uh, very Kayanupasana. So there are, say while you are watching breath, so there are many distracting thoughts coming. Maybe they are regretting thoughts. But simply ignore them and coming back to, returning back to the breath. So likewise we are developing certain skill not to being carried away by all these regretting thoughts. Rather you can establish mindfulness on where it is necessary. So as you develop these qualities, so it's of course that you are, the, the sensitivity of the mind develops, but also you develop some uh, controllability of the mind. You have a choice. You either can regret or you can establish mindfulness on some physical process. Later, all these regrets become raw material for your practice. So that is, we are in the Chittanupasana. So even the regretting thoughts, they are merely thoughts. They have the nature to come and go. They have the nature to arise and pass away. So you are using even those for your improvement of wisdom. So therefore, at the moment, develop, I mean, Kayanupasana, uh, so that you have some control in your mind, you don't need to simply be a victim of these regretting thoughts, then you can be free from these regretting thoughts. Okay, Bhante, thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Sad, sad, sad. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, now we have spent almost uh, one and a half hours in our Sutta teaching session and uh, I like to wind up today's session by paying, uh, by sharing medicine with everybody. 
यथावता चमहे संबत पुण्य संपद संवेदेवा अनुमोद सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया यथावता चमहे संबत पुण्य संपद संवे भूता अनुमोद सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया यथावता चमहे संबत पुण्य संपद संवे सत्ता अनुमोद सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया आकाशट्ठा चुम्मठा देवा नागा महिदिखा पुण्यंगमोदि चिरांगखंत शासन आकाशट्ठा चुम्मठा देवा नागा महिदिखा पुण्यंगमोदि चिरांगखंत देशन आकाशट्ठा चुम्मठा देवा नागा महिदिखा पुण्यंगमोदि चिरांगखंत मम पर इदं वो ज्ञातीन हो तो सुखिता हंतु ज्ञात इदं वो ज्ञातीन हो तो सुखिता हंतु ज्ञात इदं वो ज्ञातीन हो तो सुखिता हंतु ज्ञात इमिना पुण्यक मा मे बाल सगम सतंग सगमो हो तो यवनिबान पतिया इमिना पुण्यक मा मे बाल सगमो सतं सगमो हो तो यवनिबान पतिया इमिना पुण्यक मा मे बाल सगमो सतं सगमो हो तो यवनिबान पतिया साधु 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 Thank you, Pante. Thirty-one Sunday. Yeah, thirty-one Sunday. And I have a small okay. announcement, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that uh, next Wednesday it seems that I won't be able to conduct the session. So the next session will be on uh, that means third. Am I correct, Jennifer? Okay, so we will skip next um, next week's session and yeah. continue the week after. Yes. Yes.